Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick Gaska and welcome back to I Can Do That DIY for another doll repaint video. Today I'm going to be customizing Honey, the doll that I designed and created myself. For this doll, we're going to go ahead and start the spooky season a little bit early. When I'm filming this video and making the doll, it's actually August. To start things out, I wanted to make something a little spooky but not super scary. So let's go ahead and meet the new sculpt. Meet Patches. Patches has a total of four patches. One on her forearm, two on her face, and one on her calf. She also has one button eye and some bold top stitching. She's super cute and super creepy. If you'd like to get your hand on Patches, go check out the website. www.thehoneydoll.com There are a bunch of different options for honey on the website for you to explore. You can customize your own honey as well as order individual parts. Alright, now let's get into the project. So here's how Patches turned out. I went ahead and printed her in the color peach. Here's the face. She's super adorable. Here's the calf. And here's the forearm. I'm going to start by working on the face. I'll use a copper beach watercolor pencil and mark out the shape of the eyeliner. For this doll, it's super easy because I only have to do one eye. I'll do the outline of the eyeliner and then fill it in. While I do that, I just have to say thank you so much for watching and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the video. Also make sure to hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest projects. Also make sure to follow my Instagram accounts. The Honey Doll will have all updates on Honey, so make sure to follow that one. Alright cool, now that that's all done, using a white watercolor pencil, I'm going to mark out the eyeshadow shape. Now using a pink watercolor pencil, I'm going to color in the waterline. Alright, now let's add some more color to the face using some pastels. I'll start by blushing the face with a light pink pastel. After that, I'll deepen the color of the blush with a rose pastel. Alright, next up I'm going to paint the patches with some acrylic paint. I'll also be painting the button eye.
After I paint all of the patches, I'll work on the eyeliner. I'll use a black watercolor pencil to fill in the eyeliner shape. Next, I'll use a white watercolor pencil to add some highlight and definition to the lip. Alright, after that, using a watered down white acrylic paint, I'll paint in the eyeshadow shape. Cool, that looks really pretty so far. Now let's paint all the top stitching. For this, I'll use various colors of acrylic paint. After I paint all the top stitching, I'll use a black watered down acrylic paint to paint in the eyeliner. Using the same black paint, I'll paint the top stitching for the button. This will kind of make it look like a pupil. Alright, next using a very sharp, very short black watercolor pencil, I'm going to draw on the lower eyelashes. Again, this is super easy because I only have to do one eye. After that, I'll use a black pastel to shade the bottom eyelashes as well as add an eyebrow. For the eyebrow, I'll brush on a general shape and then refine it with my eraser. On the next layer, I'll use a black watercolor pencil to draw on the individual eyebrow hairs. Then I'll use more black pastel to shade the outer edge. Alright, now let's give her a lash! Today I'll be using Kiss Brand Faux Eyelashes in the style So Real. First I'll pull off a lash and measure the length. Then I'll cut it. Squirt out some glue. Add some glue to the eye and to the eyelash. And then place it. I'll use a pin to wipe away any excess glue. Alright, now let's gloss the button, the lip, and the waterline with some UV resin.
Once everything is fully glossed, I'll cure it with some UV light off screen. Now let's move on to sewing the outfit. I've already prepped everything I need to make the dress. Here's all the pattern pieces cut out. The dress is going to be an asymmetrical style that's going to look like it's a bunch of dresses sewn together. I'll start by sewing one of the darts. Then I'll finish that side's neckline with a facing. After that, I'll work on the skirt portion. I'll sew the front and the back darts, then I'll connect the two skirt pieces at the side seam. Next, I'll connect the bodice at the skirt by sewing the waistline seam. After that, I'll hem the bottom of the skirt. Alright, now let's move on to the other side. I'll start by sewing this one's bus start. After that, I'll finish the neckline with a facing. Alright, cool. Now let's move on to the skirt. The skirt is going to be a gathered skirt. I'll start by sewing two basting stitches along the top edge. Then I'll knot one end, and then pull it tight together. Then we'll attach it to the bodice. I'll pin it along the waistline seam and then sew it. The bottom edge of the skirt is finished with some fray check. Alright cool, now let's connect the two sides at center front. After that I'll fold over the excess and do top stitch along the skirt edge. Now let's work on the collar piece. There are two pieces to the collar. I'll sew the two pieces together with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'll leave a space open to attach it to the bodice. After I'm done sewing, I'll trim away the axis and flip it inside out. Then I'll glue it to the bodice as well as add a velcro closure off screen. Alright, so here's how the base of the dress looks. So far I think it looks really cute. Now let's add some patches to the dress. I finished all the edges of the patch with some fray check. Now sew the patches to the dress with some embroidery floss.
After I sew this patch on, I'll sew on a few more patches as well as add some button embellishment and some additional embroidery. Now let's move on to making the wig. Off screen I've already prepped everything I need to make the wig. I've made a wig cap and painted it black. I've also prepared some yarn wefts. I'll start by gluing some black yarn around the base of the perimeter. This style is going to be an updo inspired by Wig Chapel. They have some really amazing wigs, but my favorites are the pom-pom wigs. If you haven't seen them, you should definitely check them out. I'll just continue to add some hair until it looks like this. I've started to partially style it as well as section some hair off. I have a section for the bang as well as the bun already started. This part of the hair will cover up the poofy waterfall sections. One side is going to be yellow and then the other side is going to be red and blue. I'll start with the yellow side. I'll start by stacking two pieces. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now let's do the other side. I'll do two pieces of red and then two pieces of blue. All three of these colors are going to be cut at different lengths. Once I've glued on the colored pieces, I'll pull back this intersection and form a bun. Then I'll cut the colored pieces at various lengths. I'll complete the look by making a few accessories off screen. And with that, the doll's complete! So here she is, here's the finished result. Oh my god, I'm obsessed with her. I'm not going to lie, this might be one of my favorite dolls I've ever made. I really love her color story, it's definitely giving me Scholastic as well as Mondrian vibes. The wig itself was a feat of engineering and I'm surprised I made it and that it looks so good. I think she's equal parts creepy and cute which is definitely a space I love to work in. I'd love to hear what you guys think of Patches in the comments below, so make sure to leave a comment. Like I mentioned earlier, she's my first spooky doll of the season, but for sure not my last, so keep an eye out. Also, like I mentioned earlier, make sure to check out www.thehoneydoll.com to get your very own honey now. Thank you so much for watching, and for the rest of the video, enjoy the photos!
Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!